forward to computer. Oops, stop. Who's calling? Oops. All right. <laughs> How are we doing, Mikey? You are there, connecting to audio. How are we all doing? Jason, how are you? Good. How are you? Yeah. Had a big day. Had a big week. Mm. Hi, Mike. Hi, SJ. I am. I am. Well, thank you for coming up, Jason. I know you're tired. That's all right. Um, all right. Mikey is still connecting to audio. Give us a second. All right, now who in here has watched the Icy Candle video replay and is on to their homework? <laughs> Good. Tomato, good. How's that? That call is cool today, hey? <laughs> Random, but cool. Mikey will be one minute. Um, all right, if you're there and can, what's an icy candle? <laughs> That's a dangerous, scary question. Luckily, I know that you know. <laughs> um, guys, if you would like to, if you can, turn your cameras on. If not, totally okay as well. But I always like it when um, cameras are on just so it means you guys are present and you're not, you know, distracting yourself by, you know, Stu, nice camera. <laughs> Where are you? Is that your... He's in the bath, I think. <laughs> Looks like it. All right. Can you hear me? Can hear you. Can you hear me? Nice uh, lens. Writing <laughs> all the again. I didn't make Friday night call. Yes, the recording is recorded. So once you finish phase one in bounce back, let me know um, and I'll flick you the recording. Mikey, are you there? There we go. Can you hear me? That's you. How are you? What's up? What's up? Oh, sorry about that, guys. I just had to move stuff from washer to dryer really quick. Sorry about that. <laughs> I love how you do it for it. I woke up just a little bit ago, so I didn't want it to sit. Have y'all ever had laundry sit in a washing machine? Yes. Yeah, like for a long period of time and you know what happens to it, right? Like uh, I've had to rebuy clothes for that reason. At the same time. Um... Oh, because you uh, just left it in there and it got a bit gross. Yeah, I feel you. I can't stand the, um, the washing machine beeping. That's, oh, I fucking hate that noise so much. Mine sings. It just it has a little chime to it. I've done something to my screen. Hang on. <laughs> What's going on with Keck tonight? Holy shit. All right. We are good to go. I can see any of you. The chat box was just giant. But awesome, everyone. I'm just going to pop you all on mute. Except mine. Um, and if you do have any other questions as we go through tonight's call, please, you guys know what to do. You can unmute. Ever since Jason unmuted himself and spoke up on the call, his life has changed, I swear to God. <laughs> um, okay, nothing else. All right, cool. So, guys, welcome to tonight's call. Bit of a later start, um, but that's okay. Now, we've got a few good questions, but the main topic tonight was actually, like, how to put a trading plan together. Now, all of you that are on this call tonight um, and even watching the replay, um, I know that you guys are up to that stage, so it'll be a really good call. And this question was from a couple of you. So um, first off, let's get, can you, are you there, Mike? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So we have got a call from, I mean, a question from Moni. I'm pretty sure Moni Meldrum is on this call. Moni is like the... She's legit a walking mermaid. <laughs> That's how I describe money. Okay, so question from Moni. Um, for me, it's, it's more of like a daily routine type question. Um, and then we'll move into the trading plan questions. But uh, Mike, what is one thing you do or suggest to do daily to keep you progressing, evolving to be a better version of yourself, which then leads to better life skills, becoming a better trader, 
Um, what is it that you do that, you know, in your daily routine that helped you become a better trader? Um, I'm, I want to actually give, and by the way, all these questions, she hasn't sent them to me. So they're going to be off the top here. So there's actually two answers that I want to give to that. And the first one will kind of be like the one I actually really want to answer in, in, uh, in the sense that I feel like it's very important, but I'm going to explain it. And then the second one is going to be probably more along the lines of, uh, what I guess at least you might think the answer would be for me, but uh, one thing that I feel everybody should do every day that they possibly can is to fulfill their passion to generate the emotion that's known as happiness. When you are happy, you do things better. So the idea of the, this entire ideology around entrepreneurism and just grinding 24 hours a day, nonstop, every day, that's all you do, work, 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 to me, that has always been slavery to me because that's literally why I stopped working was to have the freedom to do what I wanted to do. I mean, like that's literally even why I'm here. You know what I mean? Uh, to, well, at least to some degree, but uh, again, that's part of the first answer. And for me, that's music. So I also wanted to be clear when I say make you happy, if video games, for example, or let's uh, no, let's be more of adults in here. If alcohol was a problem, and that's the thing that was going to make you happy. Alcohol is a vice. So, I mean, so could gaming, so could uh, even music. I, well, no, I actually would debate that. But, um, you know, there's certain things that can be turned into vices. What I'm saying is passion. So, again, for me, that's, that's why it's hard for me to even accept that music could be considered. I mean, may, maybe, I guess it depends on who you're talking to. But for me, it's definitely not a vice. It is... Uh, Again, my highest form of, on, I mean, it's the thing that makes me the happiest personally. And so when I know that I've listened to music and just been in that state of mind, everything becomes easier because I'm at that of you know, I'm not, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. You know, I'm not just a uh, work, 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 work. There has to be fulfillment or enjoyment in order for the human being to feel happy, in order for everything else to be reflective of that. That's, a, that's my first answer. And then the second one, again, probably more in line with what you were you know, potentially thinking about, was always trying to find one task that you don't want to do every day and do it. Like, you don't want to do laundry, do it. You don't want to... Uh, Let's uh, like, I don't know, sweep out the garage or deep clean the garage, do it. Sometimes I, in, in my opinion, it's not so much that you don't want to do, or I'm sorry, that you're not doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. To me, it always seems like an, a snowball effect that leads into an avalanche of problems. So let me just kind of fire some off. Your car is dirty, the inside of it. So then the outside of it gets dirty because then it just becomes a whole thing to clean. Then your driveway could get dirty. Then again, your garage could be dirty. Then your fridge gets dirty. Then your, uh, you know, then, then the pantry is completely disorganized. Then all of the, uh, the rugs and the, uh, and the cloth furniture doesn't smell good because you're not upkeeping it. You, there's, it's just a, it's a snowball. And then eventually there's just this endless amount of tasks that you look around and you're like, that needs to be done, that needs to be done, that needs to be done, that, you know, just all of these things. To me, that's where psychologically that problem really starts. So again, if you want one thing that I feel anybody could just work on is that every day there is always something that you will look at or something that you will think about. Um, not even, again, I'll even, I would even set the stipulation, uh, stipulation that it has nothing to do with work. In our, or our business or any of that. I'm talking about like just being a human being and existing, those kinds of things, like the mundane tasks. Because again, once all of those things are, um, um, you know, kind of addressed, your environment starts to shift a little bit to where there's more pride into it. There's more of a, well, no, I cleaned it kind of thing. And so I want to keep it clean. And then it, really what the ultimate thing of that's to do is to teach discipline. Ultimately, to do what? To get you to do something that you don't want to do, but you do it anyways. The quicker you can learn that specific skill is where you can start to apply that in, you know, literally every single aspect of life. Because a lot, how many times a day, I mean, think about today. 
how many did you did you think of anything that you needed to do? Is it done? On not even again necessary, and I'm sure a lot of those are, but I like I I, I try to think of like weird ones. Like, is your fridge clean right now? Like the things that hold your food. Uh, uh, you know, not necessarily that it's disorganized, but is the fridge itself dirty or the freezer itself dirty? Those kind of stupid, stupid things that you just overlook. But again, they play so much of a factor into uh, uh, everything. In, 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 in my opinion, of course, that would, I mean, there's a thousand different things we could say to answer that specific question. But I think just something practical is, uh, you know, important. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, sorry. So let me just move the agenda. Thank you for that. I, uh, you know, reading the question, what is something you do daily? Yeah. Everything Mike said then <laughs> personal attack. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I mean, it applies to me too, guys. We're all humans. Yeah. And it, of course it would apply to me and SJ. <laughs> like we're not super humans walking around saying how ignorant everybody else is for making all these mistakes. Like, these are things I tell myself too. So that's why that's, I literally started the call with, I have to, I had to move the laundry. Why do you think I'm moving the laundry at four o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I'm right there. I'm, I'm the one that feels most personally attacked. I promise you. <laughs> I love that. And it's so true. Like just little things like I've been saying like off topic, but kind of relevant to repot all of my plants that are like literally like screaming for bigger pots. And uh, she's outside in the dark doing it now because <laughs> we've, we've been putting it off for months. He's outside gardening at 9 p.m. at night. Go him. Um, for me, you know, definitely, in, I've you know, I've got I've got my power list, um, and every day I like to make time for obviously, you know, trading. You know, I didn't get into trading, guys, to leave a job to then sit at my computer for 10 hours a day. Like that is the that is not what I want to do. I mean, as you're learning when you're first showing the rope, uh, you know, learning the ropes, you know, you are going to be on the charts um, probably a little bit more than you are when you become like full time or whatever it is. You know, max me, like, uh, you know, like, like in October, I had five trading days. The rest of the time, I did whatever the hell I want. Okay. So you will get to that point. But at the start, um, I think for me, balance was a really hard thing that I just didn't really grasp on. Um, I am a very competitive person. I am a high achiever as well. So for me, it's just like, you know, I had that no excuse mentality, just got it done. Um, I did the things I didn't want to have to do. Who is not on mute? Um, it was, I think that was me. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Naughty mom. Um, the things that I just really make time for now is definitely growth and learning. So reading. Um, this is actually why I like the 75 hard challenge by Andy Frazella. Okay. And the reason why I like this particular challenge is because it, um, it <laughs> outsourcing, I so was, um, it teaches you the biggest form of self-love, which is discipline. Right. And that's exactly what Mike was saying. So look up Andy Frizzell's 75 hard. It's called that for a freaking reason. And it's honestly a list of like the most simple things. It's like drink three liters of water a day, you know, read for, you know, read 10 pages, do two workouts, uh, one indoors, one outdoors, and one has to be done outdoors, specifically for the person of, uh, for the purpose of the conditions in life aren't always going to be perfect, right? So if it's raining, hey, obviously you use common sense, but if it's like, you know, raining, snowing, like I remember when Andy was doing it, he was like, you know, out walking around in the snow. <laughs> um, so yeah, very cool kind of thing to do for in terms of like discipline. Um, I really like it. I failed at it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I will win. Um, but yeah, so obviously growth and learning, health and fitness, recovery, like that's different. Like yoga is just something I cannot get into. I bought like a month pass and I'm like, I fucking hate yoga. Like I don't want to do this. So I stopped doing it, you know, um, and connecting with others. Like I strongly think to become a better person, you need to um, surround yourself with those people that are really going to push you towards your goals, not push you, but just be supportive and encouraging you know, not, you know, encourage you to, you know, take a night out and get PSC and then, you know, you're going to be hung over the next day, then you're not going to do anything. Just being around people that are, you know, supportive and going to be like congruent with what it is you're trying to achieve was one of the biggest things that I've done for myself. And it was one of the best things. 
Um, now, question- I want to add one more. Hold on. I thought about, I thought about something that's really important. Again, another practical thing. It's this, it's, it's simple. It, it won't take long. Sure. The reality is, is that everybody's a human being in here. And to think that you were just going to literally stop doing everything wrong, stop doing everything that you want to do to then change your life or, you know, completely become a different person is asinine in my opinion opinion. It's preposterous. It's not, it's not something that is easily achievable. So here's again, for all of us who are, I guess I'm going to use the word this for lack of a better term, we're all corrupted. The fact is, is that trying to cure the corruption is yes, of course, the main goal, but you are not going to just flip a switch and then everything is just immediately better. Because even if you do try to do that, it's called cold Turkey for a reason. And Cold turkeying things is an enormously hard task to do for an addict for it, of anything. It doesn't might not, not even just, you know, weed or, or alcohol or something harder, you know, or um, watching TV or scrolling on social media, dopamine injections, video games, whatever, food. I mean, it can literally be, we are all addicted human beings. That's why I'm saying, like, maybe that was better than the word corrupted, but we are addicted. We, we, we have that personality in us. So here's again, something that's practical. If you are going to do something like get drunk, like just what SJ said, accept the fact that you're doing what you're not supposed to be doing, but the trade-off is, and this is where the hard work comes in is that now you must pay the other way. So when you know, you're going to embrace a vice, embrace the opposite of a vice as well. If I do this, then I'm going to do this for the price of doing this. So if I'm going to get drunk, then I will wake up tomorrow and I will do this, this, and this, and maybe put that as a note in your phone. The price that you personally pay to yourself. You see what I'm saying? That's a more practical human being. Like I understand that addictions are real. Every single, there is, if anybody got onto a call and was like, oh my God, I am like literally perfect. (laughs) Y'all are like, just learn to be that way. It would just be ridiculous, right? We all have them. And it's, it's again, not uh, that this is like, uh, maybe this turned into something a little bit longer, but this also, you know, recluses into trading. And this is why I want to say this part as well is people will come into my chat on go live. Or again, I've been doing this for five years and have talked to thousands of people in this, in this space specifically. And people will walk up to me and say, how do you cure greed? How do I, how do I not be greedy anymore? And it's like, do you, I, do you really understand what you're asking? Like you're walking up to another human being and saying, hey, cure one of the most deeply seated emotions in not even just human beings. Have you ever had, have you ever had two dogs and you have 14 toys on the floor? One dog has a specific toy. It doesn't matter about any of the other toys. They only want that toy. You know, the other dog only wants that toy. And if the first dog becomes uninterested with that toy, they go to another toy. Now the second dog doesn't want the first toy. Now it wants the other toy because that's nothing to do with the toy. It's about that. It's, it's greed. That's, I mean, that's literally what it comes down to. It is a primal instinct. So to ask someone, how am I going to cure greed is like, uh, maybe go to Tibet and live there and not literally say a word for five years and meditate 15 hours a day. And then maybe you can cure your greed, but to just say, you know, that's crazy. It's it's, and not on top of that, our society caters to greed, everything about capitalism and consumerism and everything that like just narcissism in general, all like we are embedded in a narcissistic society. So, you know, again, that's not, that's not possible or I'm not going to say it's not possible. It's not practical to say, well, I started this a week ago and I'm still greedy. I like, it's a scam. (laughs) Like people will legitimately not necessarily think exactly what I just said, but that's ultimately, you know, what they're trying to get to. And it's so again, even in the world of trading, and this is going to, I know the next question is right. Trading plan. I know you haven't asked it yet, but this is going to be a part of the trading plan as well. This is going to be a part of that answer as well, that, Accept the fact that you are greedy and that you will have the tendency to say, well, it could go for another 50 pips. Even though this is my goal, I'm going to go for another 50, you know, because I, 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 this, 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 and this, and all of these other things are telling me 
that the market's going to continue to go this way. So I'm not going to get out because it could go further. Well, that's greed. At the end of the day, like you, it is, if you, once you boil something like that down in that thought process, um, boil it down to, again, literally its foundation, it's, it's a greed thing. If you had a percentage or a goal that you were trying to meet, which is the purpose of a trading plan and a risk management plan, allowing yourself to go further because you have been convinced that the market is going to move further. And even again, even if it does, and you do make the extra 50 pips, all that's going to do is create this confirmation in your head that you can go further and further and further and further. And it's just going to slippery slope everything. So how do you fix greed in trading is that you remove it completely as a factor because everything is driven off of math. If everything is driven off of math in the sense that you know exactly what you're going for, you know exactly where you're going to stop and you know exactly what your lot size is, there is literally, if you, the problem is staying consistent with that. But if you stay consistent with the numbers, greed is not something that can seep into the results of your trading. Literally, because of once you get into a trade, it's going to hit your take profit or it's going to hit your stop. One way or the other, you have no more control. You have no more of an affliction onto the trade. It's going to do this or it's going to do that, period, onto the next trade. That's how you, you see what I'm saying? You don't cure your greed. You remove it as a, as a variable. That's the secret to me. And the only way that that's done is through, you know, math. But, you know, go ahead, SJ. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm running out of tea. We love it. We love it. We love it. Now, um, Jenna and I have done a video on trading plans that if you want, I can send that. It is up on the YouTube. Um, I love that this question was asked today because it's something that we really talk about. And I know a lot of um, you guys haven't developed it and you're wondering when to go live. And trading plans for me is something that, you know, I know a lot of traders that don't have a trading plan and they're really successful. Okay. And that's fine. Um, I learned how to do a trading plan from Mike five years ago from his template. Okay. Now I am going to share my screen because I want to show you guys. Can you see this? Give me a thumbs up. All right. So this is something that, I mean, Mike's got his um, as well that he can share and go over, but the important, <laughs> Stuart, your lens is so funny. Um, now, okay. This is where, now I've taken some things out because obviously like a trading plan, there's no two that's going to be the same, yeah? Like it's very on you to create this. By all means, you can send it in for us to like look over, but it's unique to you, okay? And this is going to come down to you, uh, you know, trial and error, you know, can always be amended, but you, you know, your trading plan is a business plan. And, you know, if you're treating trading as a business, which you should, because this is a business, right? Who like, you don't open a normal, like a, you know, normal brick and water, uh, you're not going to open a cafe or a, you know, a restaurant or anything like that without a business plan. You need to know what it is you're doing. Right. And so here, here are just like, I like to always start with a self-assessment um, I'm very big on bringing self-awareness and doing like little self-assessment things monthly um, just to check in with myself, okay? Um, obviously, these are something you can... Strength and weaknesses. Now, I did this. I asked a lot of my close friends um, who know me really well what my strengths and what my weaknesses were from their perspective because um, I always say, you know, give feedback. I'm all down, always down for feedback because I don't know how to improve if no one tells me, right? So I'm very big on... So if you're, if you know, if you're not, if you're not going to get butt hurt too easy, go and ask your friends and family for a very real, raw, honest answer of, you know, what are three things I'm really strong at? What are three things I'm, you know, not so strong at and can improve on? Okay. Because like we always say in trading, what we don't track, you can't measure. Okay. So here um, is all of these things. So I'll send you a copy of this if you guys want it. Here you've got, you know, why am I trading? trading goal. So this is just some examples from mine. I'm not going to just like, here, here's mine, because I want you guys to think for yourself and develop one based upon what you guys do. Okay. So what's your trading goal? What is your approach? Um, what are my goals? What markets am I trading? Entry rules. Okay. Now you guys know what to do when you come on the charts. Yeah. You're doing your top down you're looking for where the money is, you're looking for, you know, structure, 
you're looking for imbalances, you're, you know, doing that, you know, marking out your IC candles, going through the checklist of the IC candles and checking off which ones are valid, which ones are, which ones are not, finding entries based upon that. Uh, I know entries was one of the questions. So, you know, this is something you can work on. Where are you going to place your stops? Risk management rules, things like that. So just have a quick scan over this and I'll send it to you guys in the chats. Um, Post-market, so generally speaking, you want to build a trading plan around a pre-market routine, during, and then a post-market routine. So check in with yourself. If you're coming onto the charts, how are you feeling? You know, are you agitated? Are you hungry? Are you horny? Are you pissed off? Are you happy? Are you like nervous? Like, where are you? What are you feeling? Okay, because remember, you guys aren't just trading the financial markets. You're trading a reflection of yourself on the market. Okay, so here you go. My little personal trading rules. What are my promises to myself? Now, this is going to help you stop over trading, I feel, because it helped me. Um, one of the other questions tonight was from Matt about, you know, when is enough, when are you, you know, done trading? We'll dive into that question. But, you know, if I break one of my trading rules in my trading plan, I'm going to stop trading for a full day and focus on the reasons why there was a breach of my discipline. Okay, if I break two rules, <laughs> I'm going to stop trading for two full days. Like your actions have consequences. And if you just let yourself slip, like no one's watching you while you do this. So you need to be on your own ass. Okay, what questions will I ask after, after a winning trade? Okay, this one's key. How's that euphoric feeling that we get when we have a couple of wins and we're just like, yeah, yeah, on top of the world, right? We got to stop that. You need to be neutral. Okay, win, lose, who gives a shit? Check to see if I did everything as best as I could. What questions will I ask um, after I lose a trade? Okay, what steps will I do to help improve my trading career? Now, this is key. This is a living document. It may change as my experience increases and as my knowledge of the markets increase. Okay, now these are my trading practice principles that I run by all the time. I've got my pairs in here. I've got my trading routine. So I'm like doing a top down. I'm looking at structure on my high time frames. Where's the resting liquidity? Areas of imbalance, marking out IC candles and then going down, figuring out some trades. So this is what I do. This is how most of my guys have created a trading plan. So if you want this, just write in the chat and I'll just drop down who wants it um, and I'll send it. But Mikey. Um, <clears throat> I should have probably pulled it up. <laughs> Max was really thorough. When I first read his, I didn't even know what half the words meant. <laughs> I was like, what is that? Okay, so everyone wants it. Yes, please, yes, please. Please send your board. All right, cool. I'll just. Oh, not slides. Uh, sheets. That's what, wait, is it sheets? What's the, other, what's the damn Google? Google Sheets. The sheets? Is it sheets? Yeah. Okay. And I will also, oh, I can't, uh, what you call? Oh, I'll make you co-host. One moment. There you go. Okay. Up, 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 up. All right. So, um, this right here is, so, okay. Actually, this, cause this moves over all the way, uh, to back here. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? Huh? Your music's on. Oh my God. I am so sorry. I did not realize I was sharing sound. <laughs> I'm about it. But I was like, what's this? My bad. My bad. <laughs> I did not realize. Yeah, of course. I listen to music literally. You, you have no idea. But um, I'm sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't realize that it had done that. So anyways um this is something that at least in terms because what she had was the plan this is also a little bit of the plan and the journal so with this right here on the bottom pay attention to this so again a u d just just a you know an example here so a u d j p y stop take profit entry day when did you exit what day early close why uh on and on how many pips was the stop what was the actual pips you gathered 
uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and read every single one of these, but you can go through it if you want. I mean, again, this is essentially a template. Do whatever. You don't have to literally fill every single one of these out as if you're going to submit that to me. You're going to, uh, um, you know, you can do whatever you want with this. But in terms of the rules, I have, I like to keep mine simple because um, one of the, you know, to me, the way that this becomes fundamentally redundant is that again, you just follow the numbers that goes on. So my answer to over trading, for example, is that over trading or in fact, even under trading should not be possible with math. If you were going for a strict percentage, you were going to hit that one way or the other there. And, and obviously if you were, you know, just taking more trades beyond that, then there's obviously a problem, you know, that, I mean, how do you stop over trading? <laughs> Literally stop pushing the button. So why are you, you know, consistently pushing about something that is, uh, you know, incredibly relevant to this because it is, if you, if you, I don't know, just the way that I've been or the way that I always am is that I learn more once I'm in the chaos and I start like organizing everything and fixing the situation essentially. So a lot of this right here. So you have, you know, AJ, the pairs, of course, must only execute during London or New York must be ready to trade, of course, environment, <laughs> music to lock me into the world, of course. Um, you know, the fundamental check, uh, bare minimum two to one risk. Yep. 50 pips done when I hit the threshold daily, add on to the table of contents, what I must look for, uh, for data and numbers on the fundamentals entry checklist, you know, of course, just like what SJ said, top down. And then there's a couple of these right here that, um, are a little bit older than the exit. You know, what am I going to do? A lot of this is definitely going to all end up, you know, to something extremely, you know, in, important to this. And then the other way, uh, wait, do y'all want this? I just put it in the chat. You have it. Okay. Do you have, uh, Angel of the brain, King Slayer. I've got the compound one too. Okay, yeah, go. Ahead. That's what I'm pulling up. Yeah. Mm, 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 Guys, when you are saving this though, can you please make sure you're clicking file, make a copy, um, as well. Pretty please. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Jay, do you want to pull up the one you have for sure to make sure you can change the numbers? You know what I'm saying? Like I just did just to make sure because this one does 100%. I just tried, yeah. but let's make sure the one you send out does as well. It does. Yeah. Okay. So this right here is uh, the second thing. Now, um, what this does is, well, it serves two functions. So again, over here on the right, you'll see obviously the 30 day earning calculator day one. Uh, well, let me put, let me put numbers in. Uh, so let's do, why did this not change? Why is this 15 K still? Uh, okay, so mine might be busted. All right, so as long as you, uh, well, I still need to show that though. Um, I'll send it to you on here and click on that. <laughs> okay, I need the link, y'all. <laughs> oh goodness. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I chipping? I'm changing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my God. All right. We're here. We we made it guys. <laughs> Everyone calm down. <laughs> All right. So anyways, wow. All right. So I'm just going to keep the numbers easy uh, or not. Well, let's do a thousand. Okay. So sorry about that. All right. What this is going to do is uh, this is going to show something important. So again, first we are going to start with the earnings day calculator. So uh, day one, for example, the goal is obviously fit. Oh, well, let me explain. All right, so we have $1,000. We're going to go for 5% per day. So therefore, we are going to risk 
uh, in terms of this right here, just for this math that's presented in front of you, this is for a take profit of 50, a take profit of 73, and a take profit of 98. And that's what the three columns are. Stop 15 to 20, stop 20, 20 to 25, stop 25 to 30. Daily profit goal, daily growth percentage, right? So we're just gonna start with the first day and we're just going to assume for the sake of argument here, the first day we win. So $1,000 going for 5%, your lot size is going to be a 0.1 on going for 50 pips. If you're going for 75 pips, 0 0.07 or 100 pips, 0 0.05. So let's just stay with the 50 right here. So you're gonna go on a 0.1. And again, we're going to assume that you made $50 um, or caught 50 pips and made, you know, $50. So that this day you start with, you know, 1,050 and then you're doing the same thing, 5%, 50, you know, 50 points again. But today you're going to be doing a 0.11 to ultimately, again, assume, let's just assume that you make this goal today as well, that you have 52, now, now you're going for 5250. And now if you, assuming that you of course make it there, you should have 1,150 or a little bit minus spread. But again, just with the sake of math, uh, and this can just continues to go and go and go. And what you are doing over here is that it shows you after day 31, you should have made, um, a, you know, a total of $3,500, 5% a day uh, from, from $1,000. And then of course, what actually ended up happening, did you lose $60 here? And, you know, maybe you made 400 here. And that, you know, so on and so on and so on. And then you can do the totals over here as well. Uh, personal goals, you can also put right here. Uh, don't worry about binary. Uh, you can change the rules here if you want. Uh, but another really cool thing about this is that, again, it does all of the math for you. So this is just the power of trading and something to always briefly explain here. But just starting with 1,000, going for 5% per day, now assuming which is, of course, by the way, this is not going to happen, but assuming that every single trade you take wins and you go for 5% and make it every single day, mathematically, 1,000 should turn into 17, or well, 17,789. Let's be extremely not uh, generous here and say we turned 1,000 into what? If the 100% of that is about 18K, what would you guys say after 60 trading days, we make this account go to? We don't win 100%. Again, 100% is 18K. What is the number we can all agree with in here? Would be an acceptable, after 60 days, we've turned 1,000 into being a human being. What, what number? You tell me. In the chat. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 10k 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 60 60 dollars <laughs> uh 10k sake yeah so i'm gonna go three so 10k is way too easy so let's just say we are awful and don't get anywhere close to anywhere near 18k and that we only Again, let's just say turn 1,000 into 3K. You do that, uh, and then what happens after, you know, day 60? Or again, mathematically, same thing, but now from 3K, the number goes from 3 to 53,000. So again, being completely ungenerous to ourselves, again, I always usually take about 95% off the table. So um, 3 to, you know, let's just, let's just say 5,200. And on and on and on this goes. And as you can see, guys, you can change every day. Um, you can change the balance. So this does a lot of the work for you. And then again, you track over here. So you can scale what was actually supposed to be made and what wasn't. So this is like a profit and loss sheet, if you will. So everybody now has this. This is another crucial tool, in my opinion, to again, put all of the numbers in front of your face and that you know what you're going for. Now it's not vague of, I just want to catch pips and make money. Now you're staring at numbers, the right ones. This little green, oh, whoops. This little green, uh, uh, please don't, okay. Did I screw this up? Um, yeah, but this little green column here is going to become either your best friend or your worst friend. 
and you'll obviously need to find out why either way. I don't, there's a couple of other sheets. Uh, no, that's on, not on this one. Uh, but yeah, everybody uh, file and then make a copy, make a copy. Do not do, please do not mess with the, the actual main one because how Google works and stuff like you can, if I, the way I have to do this is that I have to share permission with it for anybody to edit. So you guys can, uh, make a copy of it and then do whatever you would like to your physical copy. Um, you know, make a copy and then make another copy and then you can do whatever you want to that one. But at least you will have like, you know, the main one. So uh, those are really, really important. Um, very, very powerful tools uh, to, again, put it all in front of you. And so you know what's going on. You, you're, you're more aware of, uh, you know, again, what should be make, being made versus what actually is. Now, I don't want, and the other thing that usually people come into problems with that is that they s start comparing themselves like, well, I should be at this, but now I'm, but I'm only at this. That is a problem. And if you, and if, if that is something that you might naturally resort to, then don't track it on there. Or again, the numbers, the, the numbers can change with it every single day. So maybe the numbers become irrelevant since you're constantly changing the, you know, the, um, the account balance at the top left, like I was doing, but, um. Uh, again, it's just really cool to see that the numbers can scale like that, that quick and trading it, it absolutely can. So, um, take, um, SJ, do you happen to have a copy of, um, the thing you were showing, but only the questions, not the answers that you have? Yeah. You should send that too. Yeah, we'll do. I, um, my kind of question that just came to me. How long do you think they should be testing out their trading plan before they alter it? Uh, it said it said it on there. I, f I forgot to point that out. But um, if you're going to make a drastic change, like let's say trade from London to New York or, none, or New York to London, you should not be able to gauge the, the, the value or the chaos of the change until 50 trades, maybe. I'd say maybe, you know, anywhere from 30 to 50 trades before you can honestly really start to gauge, like, was it London that was really, you know, a problem? Or if you change the pair, like if you go from Forex over to the indices, you should not be able to say, well, the indices don't work either after five trades, because that's not how this works. So, I would say whether it takes a couple of months, depends on how many trades you take, of course, but maybe you could do it by time, but also um, you could do it by the number of trades that you take as well. And uh, then you should, you should have enough composite data to be able to look as to what it is. Like that first thing I sent you, that's the value of that, is that the, the, the compound sheet will do all the math. The trading journal is a trading journal. I took a trade here at this time. This is the reason. This, 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 this. Okay, a handful of those things. And then, of course, the compounding sheet just right next to each other. And you, again, take the, um, take the trading plan one where you punch in everything and manipulate it and do whatever you want to it. You know, make it, make it personal. The, like everything that you guys have here. Um, Remember this one? You know, well... I do remember that. That is crazy. I was just looking. I'm sorry. I got, yeah, it's, this is old. <laughs> crazy. That's very, very old. I want her to, you know, I, again, I wanted to kind of challenge you guys. I don't like this song. Uh, I wanted to challenge you guys and say that you get the one with all of the red questions and try to fill it out yourself. You do not need to take what SJ has put onto that thing. She sent you literally word for word. And and essentially just copy and paste whatever it is that she's doing. Because again, what works for her very well might not work for you. And to, to compare yourself to anybody else or do what they try to do in this doesn't necessarily constitute success. In fact, it could just cause chaos. So again, try to genuinely think about what needs to be in your trading plan. No one can truly answer that but you. 
Like, what are your issues? What are your weaknesses? Where are they? What do you fall custom to? Do you, do you have a fear of missing out? Do you love euphoria? Do you love the highs and hate the lows? I mean, there, there are so many different little variables that, that, that very, very well might need to be checked for just you. And I would go as far as to say that for literally every single person here, because all of us have different ticks and triggers that trigger certain emotional responses from our brains that therefore will make us act a certain way, especially the primal ones like greed or again, fear of missing out or euphoria or anxiety. Like the same way you deal with anxiety as a child is a lot of the ways that we deal with anxiety now. However it is that you did back then is potentially how you could be doing it now. Like if you shut down, you could shut down in, on the charts because of anxiety and you're like, oh my God, like what, what is happening? And then literally stop making cognitive decision making and then just start fight or flighting everything. And, you, and we don't even realize we do it. That's the crazy thing. I, I, I don't know if you guys will really um, resonate with this, but every single day, every, the way this physical reality works is like movie scenes. We live in moments like this, like in one moment you're sitting in this room and then once this calls over, you're going to take off your headphones and then you're going to go be in another room, a bathroom, the kitchen outside. That's another new moment. And then you're going to get out of the bathroom and go, you know, go to another room and maybe come back in, in this exact same room. This is a completely new moment. And we live moment to moment to moment. Like again, like movie scenes. Uh, or, you know, not just movies, but, you know, the way television works, it's just from scene to scene to scene. We live in these different scenes like a fractal. And what you decide to do in those moments matters. And whether, again, I, I, and I also wanted to, I thought about something that I really wanted to reiterate, reiterate on as well. It's not that you choose to be divisive to yourself, like to go out on a night of drinking and then therefore say you're going to pay the price later. It's about accepting that when you inevitably do make that decision. That's really what I meant to say. And I hope that that, if you guys can come back to that exact part of that conversation, then the fact is, is that it's inevitable for us to break our own rules and our own things, uh, you know, to break our own discipline, even like y'all know who the rock is, right? The actor, there's literally a thing within the world of working out that's known as, what's it called? What do all famous, like famous, well, not famous, but you know, what? I, is there any workout gurus in here? You should all know. It's called, yeah, cheat day. Cheat day. Why? For, for a handful of different reasons. One of it's too for your metabolism. And another part of it could be also for just the psychological break of where it's satisfying uh, this i i don't <laughs> i don't know if i'm just beating a dead horse here but even like um you know there's no children hopefully on anywhere near this call right now but if there is uh you know children cover your ears but uh we if we are all adults in here then maybe again this is something else that we can all understand do you know what vanilla sex is versus like completely like I don't want to use the word kinky. That's not the right word for this. I'm saying more of um. It could be the partner, you know, your partner, the person you love, and there's a difference between I don't know, like kinky's again. It's not really the right word, and not passionate. I I don't know. Maybe this is I've never like used this metaphor before, but. I think a lot of adults or again, people that have at least gone that far with a partner, not necessarily, but let me be clear, like not Tinder or Grindr, like not random hookups, like with someone that you were actually with, there's a difference between just same old, same old versus something new. And that something new is kind of breaking the rules or cheat day, like in working out. That's the entire point of what I'm trying to say here is that cheat day serves the same cycle and cheat day in working out is the same function as 
not the same old, same old, the new thing in a sex life between, in, you know, in a relationship, something that's, oh my God, you know, that that's what I'm talking about. And when that decision or when that thing inevitably happens, which it will, the point is, is to not try to overcome it, but to manage it. This is like a, a secret, not a secret, but just the way I've always operated is that I got tired of trying to overcome that. And it's just, but, and then finally accept the fact that it's going to happen. It's about what I do through the process. And then of course, what follows after that actually matters, even though of course I'm not, don't necessarily always want to commit the action. And that's of course why I'm saying it's not that you choose to do it. And it's again, when it inevitably does happen, what you do about it really is the thing that matters. And, 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 and how you traverse through the situation. So in a situation to where you over trade or you blow an account, people are like, well, how do I stop blowing accounts? How you literally stop blowing accounts is literally the easiest thing in the world. Stop trading a certain way and start trading another way. It is literally that simple. You could literally make a decision right now and never blow another account again because it should be mathematically impossible for that to happen. To take a $100 account and use risk management and blow the account literally takes over 400 trades with 100% loss, like just loss, 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 like zero wins. It takes like over 400 trades to lose it. It should literally almost be an impossibility to even be within the realm of blowing an account or even over trading. How do you stop over trading? It's literally a decision. And the decision in that instance is to, again, do certain things and follow a mathematical, you know, percentage. Because, again, it should literally not be possible outside of that. The issue is, of course, staying consistent to that math, staying consistent to that discipline specifically. That is the much deeper conversation, in my opinion, as opposed to, you know, the, the risk management part of that. Because that's easy. Again, that's the easy part. It's doing it, which is like the whole conversation, not what specifically we should be doing. It's literally just doing it and not doing these things that we'd want to do versus opposed to what we would rather do. That's always what it comes down to with human beings, every single one of us. Go ahead, SJ, I'm sorry. I think that was my seat squeaking. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. I'm listening. What? I think it's my seat squeaking. <laughs> oh, no, I was just saying that, you know, if you, if you wanted to share any thoughts on what I was saying, I can easily keep going, but I was like, I think I've been going on. I don't even know how long. It's, I don't, <laughs> no, you're good. I don't. I think, um, you know, that answers kind of one of our last questions as well in the sense of when is too much trading? It's so easy to look at the charts, the chats, the recordings all day. Can one overdose on gaining knowledge? Shouldn't we have a weekly life plan um, as well as a cell plan to block out other activities? Absolutely. Like, I mean, I'll let you go, then I'll um, close the call out. Block activities? What does that mean? Um, as in like life activities, like block in other activities into their schedule. Like oh, too much block, time. block. Okay. Block time block. Okay. I thought, I thought there was saying like block it, like try to avoid it. Okay. Block time block. I'm sorry. Read the question again. Now that I understand that. I'm sorry. I think my internet is also cutting out because it keeps telling me I'm unstable. So apologies guys. Okay. Um, when is there too much trading? It's easy to look at the charts, the chats and all the recordings all day. Can one overdose on the knowledge? Shouldn't we have a weekly life plan as well as a trading plan to block in other activities? Yes. And that actually comes back to the first thing that I was talking about, which was passion. Passion. Yeah. The word used in the question was life life what does and and so whatever that word you define as life because that would of course is different for everybody um yeah absolutely because again this is that's literally why you're doing it and the fact of, of you just trying to non-stop do the same thing over and over and over with no kind of essentially no punishment well you got punishment but there's no rewards and if there's no rewards, then you literally will just stop. 
because eventually a human being will just be like, why am I doing this? And then they'll just run into all of these problems. Like there has to obviously be, if there's a price, there has to be a reward. You have to get something. If you're going to pay the price, you must receive. And you have to be able to give to yourself meaningfully, of course, because you can also overdose on that where again, you indulge way too much and then you become lazy and procrastinate and do this and do that. Like just as much as I'm saying, do this, you can also overboard on that side as well. So you're talking about how we can over educate and like become paralyzed from all of the analysis and just the numbness of all of that. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we are literally human beings. Let's not try to become robots here because it's only going to drive us all to insanity. There has to be a reason, not even just your why, like Ivana, you know, really, really stuck with this specifically. It's like, if I granted you that your quote unquote, why that brought you here is good. So like, let's say you or your parents or your children, or uh, maybe you're a philanthropist and you want to help everybody or again, whatever it is, let's say that those immediate things are taken care of and you have the money and you have the resources and now you have the time and the cars you want uh, and where you live and all of that, what are you going to do with your time and money? Like, what is the legitimate purpose as to why you're doing all of this? Yes, everybody wants a better life, but why? Um, you know, anybody can always say, yeah, I, want, I definitely want more. Um, but more what? Like, I mean, what are you going to do with it? The universe cares about that question. So, um, yeah. I wouldn't say time. I mean, if time blocks, like some people definitely operate differently. If you're going to time block it, yeah, time block free time. Free time to literally not be doing something on a block, you know? The punishment, the, the, when I'm using the, the duality of punishment versus the, re the reward, the punishment is being time blocked, at least for me. Let, me. let me be clear, at least for me, I don't like to be time blocked. But if I'm going to be, then the reward is going to be not time blocked. Do you see what I'm saying? It's management. It's balance. There's always this teeter-totter game of balance. When you know you're doing something you're supposed to be doing, then yeah, reward yourself the other way. If you know you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, then know that you must pay the price for it and do something that you know you don't want to do, but you're going to do it anyways. The quicker you can shift to that mindset, the quicker you don't have a dirty house, the quicker you don't have a dirty car, the quicker you don't have these trading problems, the quicker you get everything you need done. Just because that's how your brain works. It's, you know, there's always give and take. There's always black and white. There's always a punishment. There's always a reward. Operate that way. And, and understand that if you, once you become a master of that, of to yourself, not that you need somebody to punish you and not that you need anything to reward yourself, you do that. That is what trading is literally all about. So your ability to master that is going to unlock your life. It's a very practical understanding of uh, there's always, you know, no happiness lasts forever. No sadness lasts forever. What does last forever is the balance in between the two, in my opinion. And so existing there is the goal and what you, and you know, definitely what you want to do. Life is meant to be lived guys. And we're not here to trade. We're not here to pay bills. We're not here to make money. We are here to live. We are here to experience. So cutting yourself off from that is insanity, in my opinion. But that's my answer to that. I agree. And, and I mean, like, you know, when I first started this, balance for me wasn't a thing. And, but I was aware of that. And I also didn't look at that through a negative lens. I was just like, okay, this is just how it is for now. I know it's not going to be permanently like this. So for me, like, everyone's going to be different. When I became a full-time care of my mom, like balance, once again, wasn't a thing. I didn't even have me time. You know, I didn't have time to scratch my ass. Okay. Like it wasn't a thing. 13 hours care, full day, all day. That's why I moved into swing trading. That's why like Vargas literally taught me everything I know in that. Um, and, you know, for, as you go through those stages as well, you know, your trading is going to develop. You're going to develop, develop what's important to you is going to develop, you know, your why is going to develop. And 
at the, you know, for me, just from my experience at the start, I didn't have balance. I didn't have it, but I knew that it wasn't going to be like this forever. And I think, you know, Alex Morton says it all the time, but he's got, he's a different creature altogether. <laughs> he is just like, there is no balance when you're trying to achieve something. And it's like, you know, like, it's like when we say, you know, I would rather work five years, you know, working my ass off, learning this skill set for freedom than 30 years, 40 years at a job for the rest of my life. You know, what is, it depends, like you need to have some bit of urgency with it, but you can't rush things like that. Now, you know, up until, you know, my boundaries are so high now, like they are so firm in the ground. I have zero problem saying no, if I'm not in flow, I don't want to do something. It's a big fat no for me. And I have zero problem saying that. And um, I think they're, you know, you're, you, you know, the guy who asked this is a family man. I can't comment. I'm not a man and I'm not a family man. I don't have kids. <laughs> so every situation, you know, there's no cookie cutter answer for that. It's just, you know, if you like Matt, I know you love being on the charts. Like you're like, you froth on it. You could do it morning till night. Right. But yes, you do need the balance, but it also comes down to, you know, I do think there is information overload because if you're just watching, 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 but you're not applying, that's another loop. You know, it's like when people get stuck in this little personal development loophole, where they're just like reading all the books, watching all the videos, doing all the stuff, but they're not applying what they know. You know, that's another conversation. But um, Mark, do you have anything to add? Just because you know it and do nothing with it means you know nothing at all. To know and not do. Yeah, that, I, I'm so bad at the little motivational quotes. <laughs> I'm so bad at them. I still can't say, what is it? If you don't track it, how, how does it go? I, I, can, I, I don't know how many times I've heard you say it, SJ. Do it again. What you don't track, you can't measure. I don't know. what It's like eight. The, how many words is that? Like seven? And I still cannot figure it out. It's just, it's ridiculous to me. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I, uh, <laughs> does anyone have any other questions? Um, tonight was, you know, a nice, thorough, in-depth call. Make sure you grab the links in the chat before I end the call. Um, if you miss it, just let me know and make sure you are clicking that file, make a copy and make another copy and then you can do whatever you want with them. Um, if it doesn't work for you, just let me know when I can send it to you differently, figure out a way. I've got this one, I've got the <clears throat> one and um, I did send an edited version of the, I like deleted some of the answers out. So it's just the questions. Thank you, Mikey. <laughs> Uh, yes, I have. I, I used to, well, not buy either one of them, but yeah, Bang has another thing in it that's not really good for you either. And I'm sure G Field does too. But anyways, I only pulled up Polaris because they're an Australian band and I love Australian bands and y'all have something in y'all's water. So I have zero tolerance for any Australian's excuses because y'all's metal music is not, it is, I think the best collectively, but um, there is a couple of bands from Great Britain that are better, but most Australian bands are like in the higher echelon of everything. So y'all have something in your water. I just want y'all to know because that is a thing. <laughs> it, it sure is. We, uh, Mike and I spend probably once a week talking about bands and sending each other songs. <laughs> and it's, I love it. But guys, thank you so much, Mike. Thank you for, um, you know, getting up, staying up so early in the morning. It's 4 a.m. for you. So I really appreciate that. Bye. Everyone here. Yeah. And I'll see you guys next week will be our last week, um, our last Tuesday night call for the rest of the year. And then we'll be back in December. So make sure you guys are here next Tuesday. All right. Yep. Thanks again, guys.